Hello everyone, this is Darsonovia here. This is going to be a new format on how I'm going to be doing my Star Wars reviews and my reviews of other books going forward. So starting with this series of novels, Last of the Jedi, I'm going to be reviewing these more in depth. I'm going to abandon what I've been doing for the past five years now. I've been seeing the performance of my reviews and and I've seen the results when I do longer videos. Those tend to do better in the algorithm than my shorter videos. So in order to make the, this format work, I'm going to be recording my reviews, doing them in the way I normally do them, and then I'm going to go into, into the spoiler territory and where I talk about more stuff in detail. I'm not going to get this completely right at first. I'm new at this. I'm taking this to another level. So, I'm going to be reviewing the first two novels of the Last of the Jedi series. So, sit back and enjoy. This is going to be a decently long video for each of these. I tend to make these at least 20 to 30 minutes each. So g gone will the 7 and 5 minute videos that you've been seeing for the past few years now. I'm going to make them as long as I possibly can. Because that's how things are these days. My shorter videos don't do as well as my longer videos. So without further ado, let's begin on my review on... The first two books of The Last of the Jedi series. The Last of the Jedi series is the third series of novels written by Jade Watson. Minus the first Jedi Apprentice novel. Jade Watson wrote many books and stories with Obi-Wan Kenobi. At first, she wrote a younger Obi-Wan when he was only 12 years old. And over time, she would write Obi-Wan as the master, which would continue, you know, what he did with Qui-Gon. Now, Last of the Jedi, which is, don't be confused with the Last Jedi novel or the Last Jedi movie, shiver, the Last of the Jedi is exactly what it says, the, the Last of the Jedi. Now, in order for this to take off, Jade Watson would, for the last time, have Obi-Wan go on an adventure to help Ferris Onan. Now, for those of you who don't know who Fer Ferris Onan is, after all, I haven't, you know reviewed anything this character has been featured in for like years now he made his first appearance in the jedi quest books so for those of you who did not watch those reviews back when i did them in 2018 i'd refer to those videos because i'm not going to get into detail on what he did in that series at least in this section ferris odin is in trouble and Obi-Wan goes out to help him. Now, I will f elaborate on this further when I get into the spoiler section. And th throughout the novel, we see Obi-Wan, you know, most of the pers perspective of this book is told from Obi-Wan's point of view. There are a few chapters where we read from Ferris's perspective, but... Essentially, in this book, at the end of it, he rescues Ferris Odin from a bad predicament. And then it ends in a cliffhanger, which is the reason why I'm reviewing two novels in this review instead of one. Because if I were going to review two novels, well, this review, I wouldn't be able to do it more than 10 minutes. Now, I'm not going to give you my thoughts of this book quite yet because I'm... Still going to talk about the second book, Dark Warning, continues where the last one left off. Now, Dark Warning 
does focus more on Ferris than the, you know, than the first book did. So the shift of the protagonist is noticeable in this book. Now in this novel, not only does Obi Wan have to to, you know, worry about trying to not expose his secret, but the Inquisitors are looking into Padme Amidala's death. Now, for those of you who have not been living under a rock or have not seen Revenge of the Sith, I mean, why the hell would you, you know, read the Star Wars Expanded Universe if you have not? Obviously, you know, Obi-Wan would not get involved in Ferris's trial on Ilium. Now, Ilium is a sacred place of the Jedi where the Jedi before they build their first lightsaber at least according to the EU lore have to face their worst fears now I will elaborate on this further when I get to the spoiler section of this review now Ferris would actually get you know his lightsaber crystal they would succeed in their mission and they would depart now for those of you who do not you know want me to spoil this novel or the first one i suggest you leave now because i'm going to elaborate further and actually give my thoughts and yeah so one last warning spoilers now now that i'm in the spoiler section of this review and this will be the longest portion of my review, I'm going to start in chronological order. Now, I'm not going to summarize this, you know, book or the second one, but I'm going to give my individual thoughts on various different parts of this book and this other one because I want to try to do something different than what I've been doing up until now and try to produce better reviews. Now... The start of this book, it's been quite a while since Revenge of the Sith has happened. About a year, pretty much. And Obi-Wan, it isn't really in the best, you know, place. He's isolated and alone on Tatooine. And he still feels guilty over what has happened with Anakin. And, not to mention has a lot of regrets and he learns an old an old friend of his Ferris Owen on who was Ferris Owen who was Ferris Owen well for those of you who read the Jedi Quest series Ferris Owen was Anakin's rival in that series Ferris Owen was so I'm probably, probably I'm butchering this, but what I've been reading from the book, I miss is called Ferris Owen. Ferris Owen left the Jedi Order at the end of that series. And why did that happen? Well, I'll just I'm spoiling the ending for an almost twenty year old book series. He felt responsible for what happened to one of his friends, and he knew a secret that Anakin knew something about you know one of his friends lightsabers and didn't actually tell anyone which as a result of doing that anakin you know is responsible for one of his friends death because of his rivalry with ferris odin now since it's been a quite a long a bit of time since i last was exposed to this character i'm just gonna give my impression of ferris odin at least when I read Jedi Quest, I thought he was an interesting character, and I feel like Jade Watson introduced him, and I don't believe she would introduce a character like that if she didn't have any intention of using him in future stories. I mean, we never read anything from his point of view in the Jedi Quest series. The only times we actually get to get the closest we get to hearing his own thoughts is through the perspective of Obi-Wan Kenobi when they're talking. 
Now, Obi-Wan is torn when he finds out that Ferris Onan is alive because he has to look after Luke Skywalker. He has a heart-to-heart -heart with Qui-Gon, who Qui-Gon gives him the advice he should follow the, his heart, a.k.a. the will of the Force. So Obi-Wan, for a time, leaves Tatooine in order to help his friend. Now, if it was done by any other writer, in my opinion, this would have been a bad idea. Because, in my eyes, Obi-Wan should never leave Tatooine. Unless under extreme circumstances. And considering that there was very few Jedi left and Ferris Owen had a role to play in the rise of the Empire. He followed his heart and left Tatooine in order to find him. Now, he would eventually find him, but he would meet, I would assume, I haven't read the series, the full series, so don't spoil this for me, a, what would likely be a regular character, a recurring character in the series, Trevor. Now, Trevor is a kid, you know, I'm actually, you know, I'm not a fan of kid characters in Star Wars, but I think he seems to be, you know, kind of cool from what little we, we've read from this character so far. And we will be introduced to one of... I would assume Ferris's rec recurring characters, Rohan. I think that's his name, Rohan. If I pronounce that wrong, please correct me in the comment section. Now, eventually we would get the first chapter from Ferris Owen's perspective. But we wouldn't actually get to read more from his perspective until his reunion with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, Obi-Wan and his you know, reunion is kind of bittersweet. Ferris Owen, you know, wants to fight the Empire and Obi-Wan, you know, preaches patience. And the chapters that we get to read from his perspective is interesting because I would assume that Ferris Owen would just be a goody two-shoes kind of character and that's all, and that's what, what he would be. That's the vibe I got from him in Jedi Quest. And I was wrong. Now, I actually appreciate this of Jade Watson of slowly introducing the character, or should I say, reintroducing the character of Ferris Owen. Because if he's going to replace Obi-Wan as the protagonist, because I, don't get me wrong, I love... Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I know that he can't continue to go on adventures after the Clone Wars. So, the torch has to be passed on to somebody else. Now, whether Ferris Owen succeeds of doing that remains to be seen, but I'm sold at this point of the first book. Now, they escape their pursuers from Bounty Hunters, What's interesting, though, according to the Essentials Reader's Companion, a character from the Bantam era books is makes an appearance in here, which, you know what? I always love that about the Expanded Universe. You know, that little continuity. It's not a big thing, though. But the small details that it does, I love it. I really do love it. I really love the fact that that it takes concepts that were introduced early in Star Wars, you know, in the EU, and actually utilizes it. And that, 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 that's all I can say. Now, unfortunately, the first novel ends in a cliffhanger. And as a result of this, I'm going to be talking about the second book, considering I can't talk about one book that's a children's novel, essentially, for 20 minutes. There's just not enough material. I'm not summoning, I'm not doing a summary. I'm just explaining what I think of the stuff that had happened in, in each of these chapters. Now, 
I wrote extensive notes on both of these books. And the first scene that happens in Dark Warning happens right where Desperate Mission leaves off. And the first few chapters is essentially a chase scene. Which I think, you know, again, I really like the fact that she introduced a character that was introduced early in the expanded universe's life. I'm referring to the expanded universe as we knew it. You know, and I like taking stuff that was first introduced in the Bantam era and incorporating them in modern Star Wars storytelling. I mean, I thought that was really cool. And, you know, Boba Fett, which, in my opinion, I'm very apprehensive about, oh, how often should we utilize this character? I think the way Boba Fett was utilized here, Boba Fett was still competent and still a threat. And the characters and, you know, Ferris, Trevor, and Obi-Wan had to figure out a way to escape a bad situation without making Boba Fett out to be a complete idiot. If this was done by like a, any other writer, they would have made Boba Fett out to be a buffoon, but they didn't. Boba Fett underestimated his opponents and they escaped. Now, in this book, you know, part of the story, we get the first glimpse, at least in the novels, the comics, we see plenty of evil stuff that the empire does but we but the empire basically destroys historical sites and i'm actually am surprised how dark this book at you know is and this is a kid's book and you know what i respect jade watson from not shying away from the evils of the empire and of course the new characters that are introduced in this part of the story are i don't know how i feel about them considering they don't have much to do and and unless you know they do something of significance i'm just not going to talk about them because i'm focusing on the most essential part and that is one of obi-wan's acquaintances from you know the jedi order is alive or he thought was dead and he's on Ilum. Now, Obi-Wan is left with another predicament. Because he finds out in the end of the last book that the Inquisitors are investigating th the cause of Padme's death. And that could endanger Luke and Leia. So Obi-Wan and Ferris part ways temporarily... Obi-Wan does his own mission to ensure the safety of the twins. He succeeds in killing one of the Inquisitors that has information that could potentially link it you know, to Luke and Leia. But Obi-Wan did everything he can, so he leaves the facility where Luke and Leia were born. Now, in, on Ilum, we see, you know glimpses of trevor and how you know smart and resourceful he is earlier in the in the books at least the first one we do see how smart he is and how he's able to steal and work technology without really being noticed now the part that i'm going to talk about that's the most interesting to me was ferris owens trial when he sees visions of various people the first one of Siri Tachi. Now, one thing that this novel you know does do well is the dark moments in this in this part of the story is not over the top, like you like you would see from you know a lot of other writers. Nor is it you know insulting. It doesn't sugarcoat it. You know, it actually showcases and the, and he gets ber berated and because in these tr um visions when you encounter them as a jedi you know you see a, ver a part of yourself that you are afraid of and you have to face it and 
I think this was the moment that made me that sold me on the character of Ferris Owen. I mean, you see him when he series, and he gets his new lightsaber crystal and his new lightsaber, and of course things you know continue along. He escapes. It level ends. And I'm just going to explain the Obi-Wan ending first. Obi-Wan, in this part of the you know, novel, it learns why he wasn't ready to go through the training of the wills and becoming one with the Force. And this is where Obi-Wan learns to let go of what had happened. And... I'll explain my thoughts on how this novel handled Obi-Wan Kenobi. Of course, the other part, the other ending is Ferris Owen, our protagonist now, looking on the Jedi Temple on Coruscant and him being determined to save the you know whatever Jedi he can find. Now, I'm going to give my thoughts on this book overall. So, here it goes my thoughts on the first two books of the last of the jedi i'm not gonna lie i'm impressed i really am i didn't think i would be accepting of having jay watson not write obi-wan stories anymore because my favorite stories that she has you know written with have been obi-wan and I think nobody has written Obi-Wan stories better than she has. I know she's not the first one to write a young Obi-Wan story. That was Dave Wolventon. But she continued what he started and managed to make one of the best characters in Star Wars even better. Like... All these books that with Obi Wan, with J, written by Jade Watson, plus the movies, have made Obi Wan into one of the greatest characters in all of fiction. And I think she tur she made a great character I even better. She explored Obi Wan in ways that I don't think any author has explored since. She explored Obi Wan at his youth. And made him f feel human. And I think the way she ended his story, we all know it, what's going to happen after this. We all know where he's going to end up in A New Hope. And honestly, I think this is a great way to end the prequel era for Obi-Wan Kenobi. There is no need to write any more stories at this point. And if the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, I really hope it takes some inspiration from these books. If you're going to have Obi-Wan leave Tatooine, this, these two books would be a good what, books to look at. At least temporarily. Now, I was apprehensive of Obi-Wan ever leaving Tatooine. I'm not going to lie before I started to read these two books because in my opinion, Obi-Wan should never leave Tatooine unless under extreme circumstances. And I think the way she did it, she did it well. Any other author would have screwed this up and caused continuity errors that just doesn't make any sense. I know originally... This was conceived as a story to originally continue Obi-Wan's adventures. And this is one of the few occasions where Lucasfilm made the right call vetoing this idea. I think switching the focus to Ferris Owen, a character she introduced in Jedi Quest, was a good move. I'm looking forward to reading more with, with Ferris Owen. I mean, he was an interesting character when 
I read of him of, of Jedi Quest, and I'm glad that there's more stories with this character. I'm looking forward to reading the next eight books. I will miss Obi Wan Kenobi. I'm not going to lie, but all good things have to come to an end eventually. And would I recommend the La Last of the Jedi? Oh hell yeah! These two books are great. I argue you can read these without reading Jedi Apprentice or Jedi Quest. I think they stand completely on their own. But I would recommend reading at least Jedi Quest for context. But if you don't care about that, I think these are good reads. If you're an Obi-Wan fan and you want some Obi-Wan stories, there's so much more. You, unfortunately, the Jedi Apprentice books are hard to come by. These books these days, you know, they're out of print. They've been out of print for, for years. But luckily, if you don't care about physical copies, there's you could, you could buy them on Kindle and you could read them, you know, that way. Or it could, you could probably find some PDFs somewhere. Yeah, I don't care. I do not care if I'm in, if I'm in like, endorsing piracy. Good stories should be experienced by any means necessary jedi you know apprentice was a great series jedi quest was not as good will last of the jedi live up to those two series i don't know but i could tell you this i'm looking forward to reading the adventures of ferris owen and yeah i give these a classic rating anyway I hope you enjoy the for new format. Give me some feedback in the comment section. Thank you. May the force be with us all. And, well, next time I'll see you with another review. And that will be on the third and fourth book of Last of the Jedi. Thank you.